What's up everybody, Rob here. So, when I study history, I'm often drawn to times of transition. I find those the most interesting. Uh, times when the old order is breaking down and a new order is rising up to take its place. One of the most interesting of these transitional time periods is the 16th century. Uh, there are multiple things that were happening throughout Europe at this time. There was the breakdown of the old feudal order that was being swept away and replaced by more centralized monarchies. Uh, there was the rise of the mercantile class, which eventually led to, well, it eventually developed into the system that we now know as capitalism. And you have, you know, the old guilds were being shoved aside in favor of, you know, a capitalistic type system. And there was a new religious order with the Protestant Reformation, the Catholic Church, which had pretty much been the dominant force or one of the dominant forces in Europe, was severely undermined. This led to, of course, major upheavals. I mean, transitional time periods are always tumultuous. So with all these wars being fought, uh, there was kind of a vacuum. See, uh, the feudal order had broken down, so uh, the, it was very difficult for nations to raise troops that way. But at the same time, armies really weren't, um, well, nobody had really gotten the hang of national armies yet. Uh, they were just sort of, um, that wouldn't come out to about a century later in the um, 1640s, 1650s, that would really start picking up. So in order to fill this void of manpower, nations would often turn to mercenaries. And um, really it's during the 16th and early 17th centuries that mercenaries would make up the bulk and the backbone of military forces throughout Europe. Now some of the most famous of these mercenaries were a German group called the Landsknecht. So here we are, a very, very, very brief view of the Landsknecht. Now I'm not gonna go into extreme detail about them. I'm just gonna give you a very broad overview of what they are, what they did, how they came to be. Here we go. By the end of the 1400s, the time of the armored knight on horseback charging down his enemies was at an end. They were replaced by banks of infantry armed with pikes. This was sort of a throwback to the days of the Macedonian phalanxes of Alexander the Great and his father King Philip. Um, in any case, uh, this formation, when especially when supported by crossbows and later on musketeers, could stop any horse in its tracks. So by the turn of the 16th century, the Swiss had perfected this particular type of warfare, and Swiss mercenaries were famous and used throughout Europe for their skill and effectiveness. Even today, the Vatican is protected by Swiss guardsmen. So the Holy Roman Emperor, Maximilian I, saw these Swiss, and he thought to himself, I need this type of soldier as well. I don't want to actually hire the Swiss. I want a homegrown force. So Maximilian appointed this guy here, this is Georg Frunsberg, to create his own troops based on the Swiss model. Frunsberg hired some Swiss mercenaries to act as instructors and created his own, basically, formation of pikemen based on the Swiss model. And thusly, the Landsknecht was born. Now, the Landsknecht were officially formed in 1487. Now, the name Landsknecht is a combination of the words land, which means land, um, could also mean country or region, something of that nature, and connect, which means servant or vassal. Basically, servant of the land, servant of the country. Yeah, look, I took four years of German in high school. This is the best you're going to get out of me. Sorry. Now, before the mercenary group was formed, the word Landsknecht was often used to refer to bailiffs and court, um, court officials, things like that nature. Um, it was first recorded to be used in reference to the mercenaries by... Peter von Hagenbach, sometime in the 1480s. The Landsknecht were recruited all around the Holy Roman Empire, but were particularly recruited from the southern and western part of the country, Swabia, Tyrol, the Rhineland, that particular area. Uh, but again, they were pretty much recruited from anywhere the Holy Roman Empire had sway. Now, the Landsknecht weapons and tactics were based on the Swiss model, but with some changes. The Swiss relied almost exclusively on their pikes, though they did use crossbows as some sort of range support. But their main tactic was to close with the enemy as quickly as possible and use their pikes and, if necessary, swords and other hand weapons to destroy the enemy in close quarter combat. In contrast, the Landsknecht would use a much wider range of weaponry. Uh, now, the less experienced soldiers would use pikes, and the pike was the backbone of the Landsknecht formation, but they were more than willing to use other weapons. One of the more famous of these is the Zweihander. Zweihander literally means two-handed or two-hander, and it is a large two-handed sword. You can see here, there's a guy here leading the charge with a Zweihander over his head. There's another guy um, in the bottom left of the screen there, also with a Zweihander. The Zweihander would be used to knock aside enemy pikes and disrupt their formation, and that would then create a gap, which then either the swordsman would then be able to rush into, or would create an opening for his own pikemen to go through and uh, destroy the enemy formation. 
In addition to the Pike, the Lance Connect were also willing to use things like the Halberd and the Partisan as pole arms, which greatly increased their tactical flexibility, uh, something the Swiss never really adopted. Also, in addition to the crossbow, they were also more than willing to use the musket and the arquebus, again, something that the Swiss never really adopted, which thusly increased their tactical flexibility compared to their primary opponents. In addition to the pike and halberd and other pole arms, the Lance Connect used a wide variety of other weapons for hand to hand combat. Uh, what you see here is what's known as a Kriegsmesser or a war knife. Now, the Messer in various incarnations, whether it's a Kriegs a Kriegsmesser, a Lange Messer, or just a Messer, is one of the most ubiquitous weapons of Germany during this particular era. Now, its name means war knife, so you would think it's, it'd be a knife. It's a small little thing, but no, it's a sword, okay? And there's a whole bunch of reasons for this that I'm not going to get into right now, why a sword is actually called a knife and all that stuff, but um, suffice to say, yeah, it's a sword, okay? Seriously. The Lens Connect were also famous for their use of the Katzbalger which is what you see here. It's a short one-handed sword, sort of like an arming sword. Its most famous characteristic is this X-shaped or a figure eight shaped um, guard at the hilt. And this was the signature weapon of the Lance Connector, or at least it was seen that way in, as far as artists were concerned. Artists would often depict German Lance Connect with this particular weapon and Swiss pikemen without it. And that was sort of a distinguishing feature between them. Now, the bulk of a Lance Connect formation would be made up of the less experienced men who would be wielding the pikes. These other weapons, the halberds, the muskets, and the zweihanders, would be in the hands of men like the Doppelsaldner, which literally means double pay man because they were paid more. They were paid double, obviously. These were much more experienced soldiers who knew how to wield their weapons more effectively. I mean, uh, to use a pike, really, it's fairly straightforward. You sort of, you know, stand next to a group of people and you all point your pikes in the same direction at the same time. Being able to wield a sword or a halberd requires much more skill, so it would go to more experienced men who could wield it more effectively. Uh, they would be the backbone of the formation, and if any anybody in the um, Lance Connect unit were to have armor, it would be this particular individual. And you'll notice I'm not repeating it because I'm going to utterly butcher and mispronounce it. And anybody who is a native German speaker is probably cringing so bad they probably sprained something hearing me say that. In addition to supporting the pikemen, these double pay soldiers would also be used to guard the standard bearer, which is arguably the most important part of a particular military formation. The formations of the Lance Connect could vary in size and were actually very tactically flexible, uh, but usually were in formations anywhere from about 4,000 to about 10,000, but it could increase in size or decrease in size depending on the situation at hand. The Lance Connect on campaign were followed by a group called the Truss, which were a group of camp followers, mostly the baggage train, um, carrying their personal supplies, things of that nature, as well as skilled craftsmen, um, sometimes merchants, the wives and families of the soldiers, and of course an army of prostitutes. The truss was put under the care of an officer named a Hurenweibel, which literally means the whore sergeant, and his job was to maintain some semblance of order among the non-combatants. He had his own um, group of underlings, which are sort of like military police, basically keeping everybody in line and making sure that the non-combatants didn't get out of hand. Uh, you can imagine any group of young men, you know, full of testosterone, money, alcohol, and young, young women, um, yeah, there's going to be fights, there's going to be jealousy, backstabbing, and all sort of, you know, stuff like that. So basically, his job was to make sure that these people, you know, save their energy for the fighting of the enemy and not each other. Now, the most famous feature of the Lance Connect were their flamboyant outfits. Um, that's really their calling card. I mean, the bright colors, very elaborate cod pieces, uh, these big flower-shaped hats that stuck on the side of their heads, these... You can see um, strategically ripped and torn parts of uh, their clothing, you know, that all that stuff was really their calling card. That's what is unique to them. And uh, this is for a very specific reason. Uh, Emperor Maximilian, when he created the Lands Connect, exempted them from the Sumtree Laws because they were honestly not expected to live that long, their lives being incredibly short and brutish. Because of this, the Lance Connect took full advantage and went out of their way to look as outrageous and as flamboyant as possible. Now, there were a few reasons why they did this. First off, because they could. I mean, they had the exemption of the Sumtree Law, so might as well take advantage of it and wear as flamboyant and um, just over-the-top costume as possible. I mean, you know, you can, so might as well. 
The other reason is a form of advertising. Now remember, the Lance Connect were a mercenary unit and they were hired out throughout Europe. As long as they didn't raise up the arms against the Holy Roman Empire, you know, really it didn't matter who they worked for. So this type of clothing um, was a form of advertisement. Now this type of clothing was uh, fairly expensive. It took a lot of money. Soldiers generally don't get paid very well. And soldiers who lose and soldiers who die don't get paid at all. So if there's a group of soldiers who are extremely flamboyantly dressed with expensive clothing, that shows that they're very good at their jobs. It's a way to show off to everybody, hey, look, we're a bunch of badasses. You really want to hire us because you know what? We're really good. We're really, really good at our jobs. And um, yeah, if you hire us, we'll win. So yeah, it was really, a, I personally think it was sort of a form of advertisement as much as it was... Um, just trying to look as pimptastic as possible. Well, anyway, like I said, they were a mercenary unit that was employed throughout Europe and were used by whomever was willing to pay them, as long as they didn't um, raise up against the Holy Roman Empire. Really, it was whoever was willing to pay. Their most common opponent was actually the Swiss pikemen, and a clash of mercenaries, sort of a professional rivalry developed between the two. And um, this led what was known as the Bad War, where both sides, both the Lens Connect and the Swiss pikemen, where both sides would butcher each other without mercy or hesitation. Really, it was almost a personal rivalry, um, both sides absolutely hating the other. There were many clashes between these two groups, and the Lance Connect were famous for defeating the Swiss at the battles of Bayacoca and at Marignano, both fought in the year 1515. In both battles, the Lance Connect proved to be much more versatile. Uh, the Swiss relied entirely on the forward rush of the pikes, supported by crossbows, the Lance Connect with their wider variety of weapons. They had greater tactical flexibility and therefore were able to hold back the Swiss charge and eventually defeat it. The Lance Connect became popular soldiers throughout Europe in the 16th century, fighting in the Eighty Years' War, the French Wars of Religion, and in other battlefields, uh, Spain as well. In 1525, they were instrumental at the Battle of Pavia, which was a major victory for the Holy Roman Empire and they were also used to put down several peasant revolts. They were known throughout Europe for their ferocity and for their skill in battle, but at the same time they also developed a reputation for their lack of discipline, um, and also for their very fickle nature, which is why many commanders were hesitant to use them. Remember, these guys were in fact mercenaries. They were fighting for pay, they were not fighting for king and country, they were not motivated by loyalty so much as they were motivated by gold and silver. If pay was not forthcoming, they were more than happy to pack up and leave. They would even join the enemy if the pay was right. Most famously, they were the driving force behind the sack of Rome in 1527. Uh, very short answer, is this was during the Italian Wars, and the Holy Roman Empire was operating in the northern part of Italy, and they ran out of money to pay its soldiers. So the army, um, basically um, the backbone of which being the Lance Connect, um, without orders, marched on Rome and sack the city. Now, uh, there's a very famous story about the Swiss Guard. Again, there's a Lance Connect versus Swiss story in this, but the Papal Guard, the Swiss Guard, had an epic last stand where 189 held off the invading army until the Pope was able to escape, at least temporarily. There's a completely kick-ass Sabaton song about this. Um, it's called The Last Stand, and it's the title track of their last album. Yeah, check that out. Sabaton's awesome. There you go, just had to get that in there. In spite of the Swiss Guard's heroics and the heroics of the militiamen that turned out to help out the Swiss Guard, the city was sacked and, um, yeah, churches, palaces, monasteries, pretty much the entire city was sacked. Um, I think about a thousand of the defenders were executed publicly and was overall one of the more brutal events of the 16th century. In spite of their flaws, the Lens Connect were used throughout Europe in the 16th century until they were eventually replaced by the Spanish Tercio which were able to utilize the pike along with advances in firearms technology in a much more effective manner. Also, the 17th century saw the rise of professional national armies, which meant that using mercenaries as the backbone of a nation's military was drawing to a close. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Now that was a very, very brief overview of the Lance Connect. Um, I did not touch on any of the battles they did in any real detail. I just wanted to give a broad, you know, kind of a general, you know, just a general sense of what they were. Um, that's pretty much all I've got. Hit the like and subscribe button. Um, share this with your friends if you have any. And um, see you next time. Have a good day. Or don't. I don't care. You're adults. Do whatever you like. See ya.